Yo, what's poppin'? It's Thompson, and I am here to do a Contender Korea Week 1 review of the group stage. So, I'm going to be doing these hopefully every week. This one is a little later than I would have liked because they play Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at 3 a.m. Eastern. So, hopefully this week coming, I'll be able to watch those on the days they happen. And I'll get my video out, I don't know, on the, on the Thursday, maybe the Wednesday if I'm feeling on the ball. But, uh, yeah. So this one might be a little bit longer than the other ones because I'll go through the teams and the players and things like that in the format. But uh, yeah, so starting off with O2 Blast. So O2 Blast is the academy team of the San Francisco Shock. This doesn't mean that they will go to the Shock, but it does mean that the Shock do not have to buy out their current contract with O2 Blast for them to go up higher. Or at least they get a discount. I don't know the exact, you know, relationship. But basically, for example, if Toronto Defiant wanted to pick up Hisang, to do that, they would have to buy out Hisang's current contract with O2 Blast. And that would cost them money. Shock doesn't have to use that money. So what will happen is whenever they're negotiating Hisang's new Owl contract, Toronto Defiant would have to spend more money to offer the same amount to Hisang because they would have to include the buyout for his other contract, where Shock don't have to do that. So basically, it gives Shock a negotiating edge to some of the other teams. Now... He's saying doesn't have to take that edge, or maybe even a team like Toronto could outbid the edge entirely, right? If, say, it's 50K, it's probably way less than that. But let's say it's 50K, um, and Shock offer, he's saying, 100K per year. If Defiant offer him 175, the relationship with Shock doesn't matter because Toronto is offering him more money. So he could just go that way. So that's just how that works. And it's the same deal with T1 and the Fusion. Um, maybe not the exact same deal, who knows, but. T1 is an academy team of the Fusion. And no other team here is an academy team as far as I'm aware. Now, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't believe so. So anyway, giving a, a little bit of a feel on these teams. O2 Blast, Probe, Hisang, DPS with Viper and Profit in the, in the sub position. Viper played one map against Team 815, who, spoiler, isn't exactly a super strong team or doesn't seem to be right now. So... I don't think that one, that one map was kind of Mickey Mouse. He just played one map on Junker Town. doesn't really matter. And then for tanks, they have Junbin Max. Junbin being more of a main tank. Max being more of an off tank. Junbin is not uh, of age to play an Owl next season. He just turned 17. Whereas Max will be of age next season. So that's why all eyes are on Max to see if he will go to the Shock or what's going on there. Because he is a very, very highly rated prospect. Um... Avril, for example, went so far as to say the most important prospect or the highest caliber prospect of all potential rookies, including Hisang, who is another player. Everyone is ready. They're calling him crazy stuff. They're saying rookie of the year, everything. Not quite the same level as proper, mind you. I don't know if anyone will ever be the same level as proper, but he is very highly rated. Um, and then you have, as their support line, Bliss. Babel, former London Spitfire Babel, and uh, Caffeine. So I don't know what's entirely going on between them. Babel used to be a DPS player. Now he's a support player, right? Um, Babel played the first match against T1, but Caffeine played the second match against A15, and Babel came in on Junker Town to play some double flex stuff. But I don't know who they're going to use moving forward. I would guess Babel because T1 is T1. You know, they came second in the B-sides of the summer. What was it called? It was called the uh, the Summer Series. I was called the Summer Showdown, but it wasn't that. So I don't know who will play moving forward, but they're both pretty good. Then you have T1, who has Alien, Cleston as their current DPS, with Ding Kong not playing anything. But now Cleston is traditionally a tank. Even last season, he was a tank. I don't know if he's just playing the Reaper currently, or if he plans on transitioning. Now, transitioning from tank to DPS is very rare in this current year. Um, I would guess he's just playing the Reaper, but who knows? Um, and Alien's just insane to me. Alien Sojourn is very, very good. Another highly touted prospect, in my opinion. Arpen is the only tank here. He's been doing a bang-up job on the Winston. I wouldn't be surprised if we see him in Owl, but I could see him not making it out also. You know, it's, it, who knows? Then you have former Guangzhou Charge Unique and a Peach as the support line. Team Diamond has Soul Dynasty former Illicit and Minute with... Um, with Minute also as a sub, that's a mess up. That's clearly a, something's wrong there. Um, 
I believe they have someone else that isn't Minute. Let me quickly look at my stuff here. Team Diamond. Team Diamond struggled. They have a Sino. Yeah, Sino, who is who's quite good on the Sojourn. Uh, so Sino played more than Minute. Minute only got like one map on Circuit Royale. So I don't know. Sino's on this team. Then they have Inhyuk on tank. Half and Hyunjae. Now Team Diamond's one of the teams that actually brought up the Zarya. And I'll talk about compositions in a bit. But it's just they're the only team done that. It's very weird. Uh, then you have Kongdu. Uh, not, not Kongdu. Just Panthera with Hidden. Former Toronto Defiant. Nice. Protect. Lego. And off. Nice has actually somewhat impressed me. Um... I wouldn't be surprised if you see him. He's kind of like a very much a veteran presence. So if you don't want to take a gamble on a rookie, I could see him coming through. And Hidden's been pretty good, but not anything crazy. Panthera is the first team to bring out Roadhog. Yes, you heard that correctly. There is Roadhog gameplay. I'll talk more about that, as I said. Then you have Simpresa Gaming, who came up through the Season 2 qualifier with Aid, Top Dragon, 2U, Sanguinar, and Lee Su Min. So they have, you know, Soul Dynasty, former 2U, and former London Spitfire Sanguinar, who's still kicking around. Uh, and as well as Top Dragon, another prospect that I am very much excited for in Owl. I believe he will be there for sure. Crazy on the Genji, crazy on the Tracer, just a flex DPS all-star. He has a sick name. Um, and then you have Team 815 with the uh, former Guangzhou Charges Develop, Knife, Dong Hack, Attack, Aiden, and Slay. Um, they're not doing too hot right now. They're playing a little bit of Wrecking Ball, which is a very question mark emoji. Um, but yeah, then you have SLT with Sad Shoujin as your DPS. Probably butchered that name, my bad. Uh, but Sad is crazy, and Sad's pretty weird as a player because he is 20 years old, which is a little bit old for a contenders player. Like, normally, like, a decent rule of thumb on f is that, like, if you're not of age, you're pretty good. Like, or, or you have a higher chance of going. Because if you're already 20 years old, to me, um, your odds of making it in is slimmer and slimmer. But Sad has recently come up. He has not had a lot of contenders experience, and he's 20 years old. He's crazy. He's a little bit inconsistent, but he's just taken over entire maps, entire matches. He's crazy. Then you have Jasmine on tank and Boonjo simple support. Then you have Poker Face with Proud, who is on a loan from O2 Blast. Premier, Inokaz, Yangjun, and Missin, with the subs being Aster and Peppy, who have both had relatively decent play time so now i will get into the mirror the, the meta what is what's going on in contenders korea there is some fishy stuff going on here so the default composition for a lot of teams right now is still the standard winston comp that we saw in owl you got your winston reaper sojourn um with kiriko and lucio but the next most used comp is actually a roadhog comp with roadhog and tracer with Sojourn, Lucio, Kiri. Now, you do get some Ana stuff going in there because, you know, Ana into Hog is pretty good, but Kiriko can cleanse it. So it's just, the Ana is just to apply more pressure to the cleanse. So why does this comp work? Maybe I'll make a, a video on this that goes more in depth, but the gist of it is you have more pick potential, right? Because a lot of the time this meta comes down to Sojourn finding picks. Well, if you have a Roadhog to find picks too, that is another person that can find picks, right? And he also operates as a better Reaper because the Roadhog hook, um, his whole hog is crazy with Kirill, and he's just very unkillable, right? And then what you get is a lot of scrappy fights where Tracer shines. So Tracer can pressure the Reaper out, the enemy Reaper. She can go on the back line. She can do general stuff like that. Now, you do get some teams playing the Reaper still with the Roadhog, extra damage onto the Winston, stuff like that. But the Tracer is widely preferred and, to me, looks way better because it's way easier to force out Reaper cooldowns on the Tracer. And uh, and then whenever that's out, then you can go to town on the back line. And it just looks great. And this comp, it's like, maybe the Winston comp is better at, uh, at the peak level, but the Roadhog comp seems to be getting similar value and looks easier to actually play, despite, you know, Roadhog being a, a skill shot. Um, now, the, the other problem with Roadhog, however, is you don't have a way to check the enemy Sojourn. So you just have to outvalue her in other ways, whether that be shutting down the Winston through space or finding picks. It lets the enemy Sojourn be more free. Um, so I don't know. There's some give and take there. And then you get some other mini little compositions that have been going on. So another one is Sigma. You know, you get Sigma on Circuit Royale, Junker Town. We had um, Poker Face play him on Route 66. Other than that, you know, standard stuff. And you can play other comps on Junker Town 
and circuit and route pretty easily. We've seen Winston mostly. Um, so there's that. And then you have our reset comps, which is the same as Roadhog, same concept. You also get some player or some teams opting to play a reset as a counter to the Roadhog, which has mixed results because a reset doesn't have that same pressure, but it's just another thing that you know Roadhog doesn't really do anything to. Um, but you don't have a way to pressure the enemy soldier on either. So I think the Roadhog comp is overall better. Um, but a reset comp has some niches on like uh, Busan Mecha base where you have that nice little choke. We saw it in Owl a little bit. You have the choke that you can play in. You just act like a bodyguard. Don't let them through. Same as Nepal Sanctum. It's really good in those kind of places. Uh, and then the, there's two other weird compositions that come out. You have um, Team Age 15 and Donghack playing the Wrecking Ball. Doesn't look like it's doing anything. They're 06 for a reason. Uh, and it's been very whatever. And then you had Team Diamond who are 09. And they have uh, brought out the Zarya a little bit against um, against Kongdu. Uh, I guess just Panthera. I got to stop saying Kongdu Panthera against Panthera. And they just, it just doesn't work out because yes, you can bubble the hooks, but eventually the hook rotation just outvalues the Zarya rotations. And you also just out sustain them with Roadhog. So, so Panthera can just you know, last over two bubbles, three bubbles, and then you just kind of win. So there's that. And that those are the compositions. So the format for this, before I get into the actual matches, uh, three weeks of group stages, seven matches total, because some teams will play uh, three matches in a week, one, somewhere around here. And, uh, and then you go into a bracket where I believe the bottom two don't make it, as the red shows. So that's all that. This will not be as long for the next week one. I just wanted to, you know, get that out there. So we're all up to speed on, you know, Contenders Korea. Um, and another thing, final thing before I get into the other ones, get into the actual matches. I did stream me just chilling and watching these these two matches while I can. So I'll probably be looking to do more streams like that because it was really chill and felt pretty good to do. So be watching out for those as well as, you know, the final tier list videos for... Owl Season 5, I'll be making my, my Rookie, my Tank, my DPS, and my Support one sometime this week. Maybe tomorrow I'll do one. I'll, I'll probably be able to do one tomorrow, so I'll try and sneak it in there. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Or tomorrow or today, depending on when you're watching it. I mean, like, uh, November 13th, the Sunday. I'll probably try to get it there, because I'm recording this later than I thought it was. But anyway, finally, we are here. So, who's playing what comps? How are these matches going on? Things like that. So, first match with O2 Blast against T1. And T1 did come second in the previous contenders, the Summer Series B-Sides. But O2 Blast just kind of ran them over. This was a standard Winston v. Winston for the most part. O2 Blast did bring out a little bit of Arisa on Li Zhang Control Center, I believe. Um, but O2 Blast just look well, super well coordinated. They look super, super good. And uh, I don't know, T1 didn't, didn't feel like they had what was going on there. I don't know. It was a little weird. Uh, O2 Blast just seemed like the better team. And T1 did improve later, but they went back. Like, they lose to Team Diamond, or they beat Team Diamond. They drop him out to PF, but that first map just didn't look like they fully had it. Then you had Panthera against SLT, and this was a giga banger, and this is where we see the Roadhog for the first time. And it, w it had some mixed results because it was a 3 2, but it worked out pretty well. So Panthera on the Hog against SLT on the wins. Now, SLT also played a little bit of Sigma. They played some Arisa towards the end as they were trying to figure out how they want to deal with this hog comp. But, god damn, this was a banger of a match. Uh, Protect on the Roadhog went kind of crazy on this new Queen Street specifically. SLT had, looked like they had this in the bag, and then slowly but surely, Panthera kept gaining more space, more space, and they just kind of overtook them towards the end there uh, on that hog comp. And it just looked insane. Just looked insane. Um, however, Sad won them Circuit Royale. Sad did an absolute ton of work on Busan. And that's basically what I accredit these, these two map wins to the most, is Sad being an absolute insane gamer, like straight up. Um, but yeah, that's the most part there. Then you have Poker Face against Team Diamond. Team Diamond really not impressing. Just not impressing. I don't know. They, they just look lost. Poker Face just played the Winston. They played, this is where they played the Sigma on Route 66, and they just out damaged them. Uh, they just, I don't know. It's, it's, I don't want to go too in depth with this. They just look better somehow. Team Diamond had a really rough go of it this entire week. They played their three match week here, and they went 
three zero in all of them. Oh three rather in all of them. Not a great look. Um, I'm a little shocked. I mean, you saw bringing up Azaria pick into the hog is just like kind of desperation. I feel like like that's really not a good look. I I highly doubt that would ever be the play for any of these teams. Then we get SPG against A15, and this is where we solidify the hog pick as a genuine thing because we have two teams playing it now. Panthera played pretty well. SPG, maybe not one of the higher tier teams, but still a pretty damn good team. Well, mm, they did lose to, uh, to SLT, but yeah, pretty pretty good because you had two of you going absolutely hog wild, and A15 didn't look like they had a clue what was going on. They bring out the Wrecking Ball in Paraiso. It does not find any work. They bring out the Sombra as well. It's not doing much work either. Um, they ended up mirroring the hogs in the end, right? Because it's just like if you're not winning on the on anything else, just mirror hog. And if hog is is ends up being the actual meta, imagine what owl looks like if it was if it this turns into a road hog meta in grand finals. I don't know if it will because O2 blast. Yeah, they did play a little bit of hog. They they did some experimentation against A15, but A15 are probably the worst team in this tournament. Just after this first week, I would say. So, hard to say, but we'll see. T1 against Poker Face. T1, they finally turned it on now. Arpen played a lot better, I think, on the Winston. That was a key thing back here. I think he played a lot better. The tempo was there. Um, and they end up winning even against the Sigma on circuit with PF taking only King's Row. Um, but yeah, just for the most part, the Winston v. Winston... Definitely goes the way of uh, FT1 on this one. You have Panthera against Team Diamond. Panthera just just gave her Diesel. The Roadhog against the Zarya comp didn't work out. And the Roadhog comp just simply won. Um, just a compositional mismatch. And Team Diamond, don't try that again. Then you have the next day where I watched these on stream with some people that pulled up. Shout out to you guys. SLT against SPG. And SLT, sad is a uh, nutcase. I'll say it again. Bro's crazy. Um, you had SPG still earning the hog comp, not quite w winning it out. Uh, SLT did play, a, or yeah, SLT played a little bit of hog there, but a lot of Winston and they put some Sigma as well on uh, Busan. They b broke up the Sigma a little bit, but SPG do take that one because I don't know, maybe the hog comp's better on Busan. Maybe SLT weren't prepared for it as well. Who knows? Um, but they, they found a way with Sad being the GOAT. Then you have O2 Blast for 815. You had this is one that had a lot of uh just like experimentation. As I said, caffeine did play instead of Babel. Not sure why. But yeah. You had Junbin on the Arisa a bit. You had um Max come in on the Sigma for Junker Town. You had Viper play some Tracer for some reason. I don't know why Viper was here. Maybe they're just giving him some maps. But uh but yeah, O2 Blast, best team. A15, maybe worst team. Not much to say there. And then Team Diamond against T1. I had higher hopes for this one. But straight up, in the, in the Monkey Duel, T1 are still on top. Team Diamond got to figure out something. They got to go to the Hog Comp. They got to fix their Winston comms. Inhyuk, to my knowledge, is traditionally an off-tank player. Maybe I'm wrong on that. I'll double-check right now. But, oh no, he's a main tank. I'm just trolling you guys. I'm just trolling. I'm I'm stupid. Don't don't mind me. Inhyuk is a main tank. So I don't know. You're not winning on the Winston, just go to the hog. Well, I don't know why you're putting them on Zarya, especially now. I assumed you'd be an off tank because he's playing Zarya, but who knows? Anyway, there was my kind of scuffed off uh contenders review. Next week probably be a bit better because I'll have have watched the teams already and I'll know what to look out for and things. But yeah, so let me know your thoughts. Like so if you like it, subscribe if you really liked it. We'll be streaming more this week and pumping out more videos. Thank you so much. Have yourself a good one. And deuces.